So I think I made it no secret that I rely heavily on the music for videos as of recent. To me, it's been a new and different way of making content. In fact, the newest review I've made as of recent has had a total of 17 different songs, coming from internet producers, famous artists, and even video game OSTs. A lot of you may also know that I'm a pretty big movie guy, and can talk passionately about any movie that comes across my radar. But in a mesh of both these topics that I just mentioned, I've always wanted to try my hand at breaking down a movie soundtrack. A soundtrack to a movie, much like a video on here, can make or break an end product, having the power to enthrall its viewers by effectively magnifying the viewing experience. And after searching for a long while, I found the only soundtrack for a film I ever actively enjoyed through and through was Ratatouille. This film remains, to me at least, one of Pixar's only few movies that didn't cater to kids first, effectively being an animated arthouse movie, tackling the struggles of a creative and the steps it took for our main character to get to where he wants to be. But apart from one video, I never really found anyone talk about the movie's music. Sure, there are tons of videos talking about the film in general, sometimes even feature length ones, but from what I've seen, a lot of these videos disregard the soundtrack entirely, even though it plays just as much of an integral part of the story as anything else does. So, that's what I'm here to do today. How we'll be breaking down music here is pretty simple. We'll talk about the three most important points of the film and each track respectively. First act music will be from the film's start point to where Remy finds Gusteau's. Second act music is from the point where Remy comes across Linguini to where he completes the special order. And the third act tracks will be the first kiss between Linguini and Colette all the way to the ending notes of the film before the credits roll. Do you got that? Good. Just another fair warning here, I'm not a full-blown music critic and or expert when it comes to this type of stuff, so you won't find full breakdowns of these tracks on this video. I'm just a guy doing the best I can, so cut me some slack. With all the formalities out of the way, welcome to the music of Ratatouille. So this is a little awkward. We got a sponsor for this video. Yes, really. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Let's be honest, in today's climate of keyboard warriors and company scams, there's nothing more important than being safe and secure while using the internet, which is why we have services like ExpressVPN. Public Wi-Fi at hotels, coffee shops, malls, and even more are all a huge risk privacy-wise. Something as simple as sending an email can be intercepted by different parties before making it to its destination. Lucky for you, ExpressVPN creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet, so you won't have to worry about it anymore. And did you know that in places like the US, it's completely legal for your ISP to sell your data to ad companies? That's right your internet service provider can completely and legally track everything you do online. Well, with ExpressVPN, you're given all the privacy you need with just a few clicks. How about accessing region lock content? Your favorite movie or show may not be available in your country, but with ExpressVPN, you can switch over to any of their thousands of servers and enjoy at your leisure. Trust me, getting footage for these shows and movies is not easy to do. So a feature like this is really helpful for a guy like me. So what are you waiting for? Use my link below to get 3 months free with a 1 year plan. By supporting them you support me and the channel. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. First track of the movie is Welcome to Gisteau's. It's a pretty short one compared to the rest of the movie's library, starting with a bit of the French national anthem to accompany the narration. But then, it confidently swings over to its own instrumental with an accordion and strings, to set the mood of Gusteau's as a very creatively driven place, all the while helping to put into perspective the message that would carry the movie throughout the entire runtime. Anyone can cook. Nothing else to say here but a solid start to the soundtrack. A lot of the tracks in Act 1 have what Michael Giacchino himself would describe as a very thief-like score, and it reigns true here, utilizing a lot of woodwinds like clarinet, percussions like maracas, and strings like harps and violins to capture these three different scenes, the constant thief-like for the beginning, and the slow down, almost lazy-ish feel when Remy talks about his boring life in the colony, and the complaints with his father, even a tiny drop of whimsy when Remy tells the audience about his thoughts of the world he's never seen. A very warm track with a few hints of speed there. The sweet sounding tunes don't end there as we get the third track of the film, Granny Get Your Gun. We're introduced to a melody consisting of guitars and an echoing instrumental in the background, along with the slow violin at the end. It helps the beginning of the track cap off the homely feel that the end of the last song had. After a long stretch, the music hits you with two tons of fast, intense chase music as Emil and Remy attempt to escape the crazed old lady. This can also be said for the next song, 100 Rad Dash. The thief-like track from before reaches its peak as every instrument imaginable goes full energy. The scene even fits this so well with the rats in the scene, having to make their escape from the old home they established for themselves, and as Remy tries his level best to catch up with them, even having a few close calls with the old lady, a crazy fear-filled track that I gave a couple of re-listens to myself. 
We reach one of my favorite scenes of the movie and one of the high points of the soundtrack for me, which ironically starts off at Remy's lowest point in the film, a real monologue filled part of the film. Our main character's lost everything but held on to hope. In his own words, Well, I've just lost my family, all my friends, probably forever. In a similar vein, the music in this entire sequence is filled with such whimsy when Remy enters the walls, like a natural evolution of the previous thief-like musical notes we've been accustomed to this far. Much like our main character, the track scurries with a wild flute in the background. We go through so much in this scene. The iconic French couple with the gun, the run-in with a nice cameo from Doug, the very obviously placed rat trap, and the music opens up to a crescendo of sounds with the reveal of France, and finally, Gusto's. has a new flavor. The second act music's a lot more of a different palette compared to the first. And it's here where I immensely enjoy both the movie and the tracks from these parts of the film. And Cast of Cooks personally feels like a really nice start to it, with a sound almost like a jazz club, with a strong bass, percussions, and saxophone. There's a smooth feel to this one, and for a gourmet kitchen of all places, it fits surprisingly well. Accompanying Cast of Cooks is a really well-constructed piece. A real gourmet kitchen has a really relaxing vibe to it, like a nice intermission after all the craziness in the first act. And our main character, at least for a bit, got time to breathe and immerse himself in a place full of his favorite thing in the world, even indulging himself in some talk about the different parts of the kitchen. But unfortunately, not all good things are meant to last. Our rat gets thrust into the chaotic side of the place Remy idolizes, almost dying multiple times within the same scene. Sharp twists and turns, quick pauses with transitions to the dining areas. This track really does have it all. Another iconic moment in the film, Remy's first rush with the soup. This is a relatively short scene, but it's a great one. The different sounds almost chaotically mashed together to form the music here. It's a swirling melody that perfectly captures the creative energy that Remy has while making the soup. It's a rush of a song, and I can't recommend it enough. The intense feelings from the songs of Act 1 returns as our noodle-limbed chef Linguini gets caught, unaware that the soup gets taken out. There's a feeling of dread washed over this scene, where Linguini's stuck on the situation he's found himself in. The music's quick paced, but almost evil sounding like some others we'll talk about, but altogether makes for some really great background music. Next track's A New Deal, which dips its toe into those thief-like music cues again, but with a twist, an added transition to Linguini's music cues, being described by Michael Giacchino as clown-like, which fits the character and his goofy antics throughout the film, all with a nice beat to it as a cherry on top of this cake. In a few words, this can be described as a trial and error song. Like the way it constantly switches from heavy instrumental to soothing violin can reveal to the listener where the duo are in the cooking process even without looking at the movie. Dramatic pauses, soothing slowdowns, and a nice finish to it. This remains my most replayed song from this soundtrack for a reason. Colette in the movie, to me at least, seems like a fiery character from the little interaction the duo have had with her so far, and the score here complements that. As Linguini gets lashed with her harsh criticisms, the instrumental too has two contrasting sides to it, which I believe represent the professionalism with the violin and accordions, and the passion with the guitars, drums, and woodwinds, both of which fit the kitchen environment of the film. And it gets better near the end as she starts to warm up to Linguini and explain more about the other cooks and their backstories. Last one here is another one of my favorite tracks. Special Order has a specific edge compared to the rest of this part of the soundtrack. A mix of accordions, bongos, and strings that makes a unique melody all its own. The song's an absolute bop to listen to, contributing to the antics of Remy and Linguini in the kitchen, one force against another. The song reaches its peak, in my opinion, at the end, when the rest of the restaurant enjoys the food that they make, ending on a very merry note. <laughs> Thank you.
The third act tracks of the movie don't necessarily hit as hard for me personally for the most part, but they are still pretty good, one of which is Kiss and Vinegar, one of the movie's only few tracks to capture conflict during its runtime. Our golden boy Linguini is willing to put out everything on the table when it comes to conflict with Colette, but with some quick thinking Remy manages to avoid getting noticed by pushing the two to kiss, leading to a harmony of swirling emotion to cap off the scene, some really powerful stuff. The melody shifts however to a more sinister one as we get our first glimpse into not a villain for the movie but a representation of one, Mr. Anton Ego. The violins and woodwinds help capture the feeling of being uneasy. Ego may not be threatening on his own but his presence, voice and mannerisms all hit the audience with the feeling of something wicked approaching. Losing control is an interesting one for sure, like a fusion of the clown-like melodies from Linguini and the jazz feel of Cast of Cooks, being accompanied by a nice piano too, all coming together to make the piece feel whole. My favourite part of the track is definitely later on when the music goes double time. A big burst of energy can be felt in this one, and it shows. Not much to say about Heist to See You, it's a return to the thief-like musical cues I mentioned previously, acting more as a bridge between losing control and the next track we'll talk about, especially with the ending melody when Remy makes the discovery that Linguini is Gusto's son, leading to… Now we've reached one of the only true moments in the movie that feels intense in a way, as Remy makes his way through the streets of France to stop Skinner from grabbing the well. It's a rush, with every instrument going beyond to capture the scene as such. At this point in the film, Ego has separated our two main characters, and out of spite and anger, Remy decides to fully embrace his thief roots, and it's here where those notes reach their peak, with the same speed and sly feeling as the rats in the scene itself, with some great choreography for the moments when they're stealing the food from the restaurant. But there's also another point of this track that really hits hard for me, and that's towards the end. The movie gives off the feeling of guilt and it makes perfect sense given the context of the film. We're put into a situation where the two aren't completely in the right or wrong, but have lost their way, so this perfectly captures the remorse our main character has, as he walks alone and lost again. Not too long after Remy's free from Chef Skinner, we get one of the best that the third act has to offer, Abandoning Ship. Honestly, this one's very inspired, with nothing but violins as Linguini delivers a speech meant to get the other chefs on his side. But unfortunately, due to them not being able to accept this crazy idea, they all quit. This is the lowest point of the film, both for our main characters and in general. But the thing about getting to your lowest point is that there's nowhere left to go but up. Dinner Rush acts as the peak of the third act for me, essentially being the track from the film that best captures determination, glory and guts. Our rat is given a chance to do what's right, as he calls upon the help of the so-called thieves he was convinced to be a part of in order to help with running the kitchen. It's one of the grandest scores of the film, tons of instruments coming together to capture the specific feeling. The track later on swirls with emotion as our main character prepares the dish to wow Ego. As we reach the moment of truth, we're treated to one of the best scenes where Ego, someone who was portrayed in the movie as the biggest obstacle for our two main characters, is left in shock and awe over what he's just tasted. The pure joy felt as he finds himself enjoying the experience. Trust me, out of all the tracks from this movie, this one's a must listen to all the way through. The final track is Anyone Can Cook, a scene which not only is important from a musical standpoint, but a general one as well. This one scene itself has aged like fine wine. Critics will always exist when it comes to anything creative. That's a given at this point. And according to Ego, there's not much of a big sacrifice from being a said critic. Constantly tearing apart anything that comes into the public's view, with the bitter truth being that even the most average looking thing in the world can hold much more thought and care than empty words being said by a talking head. Ratatouille's always been a movie about creative identity, and the fact that this scene ties together the whole film so well and manages to portray the importance of creativity and new ideas in today's world is genius. All the way to the end, Anyone Can Cook is an arrangement that makes this soundtrack what it is. Making this video was definitely an experience. I feel like the music in media is overlooked nowadays, but the score to media, especially a whole film, is a process in of itself, with a large group of skilled people needed to make one song. And who knows, maybe in the future I can find more movies to catch about the music to. But for now, give Ratatouille's soundtrack a look for yourself, and if you'll excuse me, this channel's sorely missing another series review. Looks like it's gonna be a great day today to get some fresh air like a stray on a straightaway. Hey you, 
Got a light, nah, a Bud Light. Early in the morning, face crud from like a mud fight. Looky here, it's just the way the cookie tear. Prepare to get hurt and mangled like Kurt Angle, rookie year. The rocket scientist with the pocket wineless. Some even say he might need some psychiatrist. Doom, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Yes, why would the darn thing be wandering? She's just a foundling, barely worth fondling. My posse's on Broadway like Mama, I want to sing.